the challenge here is that uh, government regulatory uh, authorities tend to be set up in reaction to something bad that happened. Um, you mentioned uh, chat GPT earlier. Um, you know, I, I played a significant role in the creation of uh, OpenAI. Um, essentially, at the time, I was concerned that Google uh, was not uh, paying enough attention to AI safety. And, um, and so, and so I, 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 with a number of other people, um, created OpenAI. And although initially it was created as an open source nonprofit, and now it is closed source and for profit. I, I don't have any stake in OpenAI anymore, nor, nor am I on the board, nor do I control it in any way. Um, but the, the ChatGPT, I think, has illustrated to uh, people just how advanced AI has become. Um, the, because the AI has been advanced for a while, it just didn't have a user interface that was um, accessible to most people. Um, so what really ChatGPT has done is just put an, an accessible user interface on AI technology that is um, that has been present for a few years. Um, and there are much more advanced versions for that that are coming out. Um, so I think we, you know, I think we, we need to really be, I think we need to regulate AI safety, frank, frankly. Um, because if you think of any um, technology which is potentially a risk to, uh, to, to, to people, like if it's an aircraft or uh, you know, cars or uh, medicine, we have regulatory bodies that um, oversee public safety of, of cars and planes and medicine and um, I think we, we should probably we should have a, a, a similar sort of regulatory oversight for artificial intelligence because um, it is I think actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or medicine um, so um, and this may slow, slow down AI a little bit but I think that that might also be a good thing. Um, the, the, the challenge here is that government regulatory uh, authorities tend to be set up in reaction to something bad that happened. So, if you look at say aircraft or, or cars, um, you know the cars were unregulated at the beginning. Aircraft were unregulated, uh, but they had lots of um, you know airplane crashes, and in some cases, manufacturers that were cutting corners. Um, and and a lot of people were dying, so they, the public was not happy about that, and so they established a regulatory authority to improve safety. And now commercial airliners are um, extremely safe. Um, in fact, they're safer than than if, if you were to drive somewhere. Uh, it's the safety per mile of a commercial airliner is better than a car, and, and cars are also extremely safe compared to where they used to be. Um, so. Um, but if you say, if you look at say the introduction of seatbelts, uh, the, the auto industry fought the introduction of seatbelts uh, as a safety measure for, I think, 10 or 15 years um, before finally the regulators made them put seatbelts in cars, and that greatly improved the safety of cars. Um, and then airbags were another big improvement in safety. So. Um, my concern is that with AI, if, if there's something bad, that, if something goes wrong, um, the reaction might be too slow from a regulatory standpoint. Um, you know, I, I, I'd say like, it, 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 you know, if I'd say like, what, what are the biggest risks to the future of civilization? Um, the, 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 it's AI, AI, but AI is a double, you know, it's, a, it's, it's both positive and negative. It has great, great promise, great capability, but it also with that comes great danger. I mean, you look at say nuclear, it, it, you know, just the discovery of sort of nuclear physics, uh, you had nuclear power generation, but also nuclear bombs. Um, so anyway, I think we should be quite concerned about it and we should uh, have some regulation of what is it, if, if it fundamentally um, a risk to the public. Uh, um, so, you know, I, I thought the, it was important kind of for the future of civilization to try to 
correct that uh, thumb on the scale, if you will, um, and and, uh, and and just more, have Twitter more accurately reflect, uh, like I said, the the values of the the, the people of Earth. Um, that's the that's the that's the intention, um, and uh, hopefully we succeed in in, in doing that. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, but how do you see Twitter, if we, we say it five years down the road? What's your vision for, for this platform? What, sh what should it do? Well, I think it would be, I'd like to, you know, I have this sort of long-term vision for something called uh, X.com from back in, way back in the day, uh, which is kind of like a, a um, sort of like an everything app. Um, where it's just maximally useful. It does, you know, payments. Uh, it does um, uh, so it provides financial services, provides information flow, um, really anything digital, um, and um, you know, also provides secure communications. Um, so, it, it really, to, to, to you know, I think you know, be, be as useful as possible, as entertaining as possible. Um, and uh, also to be like a, a source of, of truth. Like if you want to uh, find out what's going on and what's really going on, um, then you could, should be able to go on, on, on you know, X, the X app, and, uh, and, and find out. So it's a sort of, source, a, sort of a, a source of truth and a maximally useful, I guess app is the wrong word, but system. Um, and, and twi Twitter is essentially an accelerant to that sort of maximally useful everything app. Um, yeah. How how you are gonna? I mean, if you look at Twitter today, I mean, it's it's a platform. Sometimes there is a lot of misinformation in Twitter. Sometimes I don't feel comfortable even because there is some way there is this negative between nation, between people, between a different uh, ethnic uh, group. There is this hate thing. How you are, how you are going to fix this issue where you are, you are on a mission with, for humanity to get them together? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think there's, um, there's something that we're, that we're putting a lot of effort into called community notes. Um, it's currently just in English, but we will be expanding it to uh, all languages. Um, that is, I think, quite a, a good way to um, assess the, the truth of things, where it's the community itself, basically the you know, the, the people of Earth who are basically, you know, um, not exactly voting, but, but competing to provide the most accurate information. So it's sort of a, a competition for truth. Um, and I think it's a very powerful concept to have a competition for truth. Um, and because well, you can also say, like, what, what is true? It's because what may be true to some may not be viewed as true to others. But you want to have the closest approximation of that. These technology tools are definitely uh, double-edged swords. We had n nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt. Uh, sure. Well, I, th I think some of it's going to sound pretty obvious, um, but uh, you know, anything to do with the sustainable energy is going to be um, very significant in the future. Um, so, if it's to do with uh, lithium-ion batteries for stationary storage, or for cars, aircraft, boats, uh, that's that's going to be very significant. Um, artificial intelligence will obviously be very significant in all fields. Uh, uh, you know, self-driving cars, self-flying airplanes, self—you know—piloting boats, um, and uh, you know. So I'd probably recommend learning those. I mean, these, these are these are very technical subjects, of course. There are many other worthy pursuits, but as a technologist, uh, that's what I would recommend: um, AI and sustainable uh, technology. Um, so. Um, I, I think there's, a, there's a, lot of op, a lot of opportunity in uh, synthetic uh, biology uh, with the synthetic um, uh, messenger RNA stuff. Uh, that's that's going to be a revolution in medicine. I think comparable to um, audio going from analog to digital, um, synthetic uh, RNA is, um, is like medicine is going digital. Um, 
it's, 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 a, it's a much more profound revolution than I think most people realize. Well, I think we should be a little concerned about AI uh, because we don't, we don't want uh, digital superintelligence that goes wrong and causes um, you know, damage to, to humanity. So I think we, we, sh we do need to be cautious with artificial intelligence. Um, you know, on the synthetic biology front, that's also that has the potential to be dangerous because it is possible to create a far more uh, damaging virus than it, than would occur in nature. So, you know, th these these technology tools are definitely uh, double-edged swords. Um, uh, the more powerful the technology, the more careful we need to be in how we use it. AI, what will AI do? I, I, I don't think we need AI to solve sustainability. Uh, that, that, is, that is happening. It might help us accelerate it. Um, but I think we should also be cautious about AI and, and just make sure that as we develop AI that it uh, is, uh, you know, it doesn't get out of control and, and that, uh, that the AI helps make the future better for humanity. No, I mean, I th the, when I was in college, I just thought, well, what are the things that are most likely to affect the future of humanity, just in, you know, at a macro level? And um, it just seemed like it would be like the internet and sustainable energy, uh, making life multiplanetary, um, and then genetics and AI. And I thought the first three, if you worked on those, they were like almost certainly going to be good. And then the, the, the last two were a little more dodgy. <laughs> I mean, just ubiquitous computing everywhere. Um, I, I think like AI is going to be incredibly sophisticated in 20 years. Mm. Um, the, when does I mean, it first it, wake it, up? It, it, like, it seems to be accelerating. And the, the tricky thing about predicting things when there's an exponential is that an exponential looks like looks linear close up. Um, and, and, but it's actually, it's not linear. So, uh, and, and AI appears to be accelerating. Um, well, I had sort of a debate about someone like, is AI accelerating or not? And the, the, like, he was saying, well, what's the y-axis? You know, if, you, if it's accelerating, um, you have t on the x-axis, but what's, what's the y-axis? And I said, well, I thought about that, and I think you could have a recursive y-axis, so that uh, if, if, if at any point in time your, your predictions for AI are coming sooner or later, um, that, that actually would help define whether it's uh, accelerating or not. But um, I mean, I'm not sure if I fully answer your question. So, in, in, in terms of what, what I think, 2025. Oh yeah, please. Um, so, for, for sure, ubiquitous computing, um, AI that's beyond anything uh, like the public appreciates today. Um, I think we'll have um, most of the new vehicles being produced uh, being electric, um, and we'll be probably have a super majority of energy being produced being. Uh, Sustainable. So I think I think we're on head of solar primarily track. in your mind. Primarily solar, yeah. Um, and um, so I think those I think that those are sort of some good things. Like I think we'll be in, on a, hopefully on a good path for sustainable energy. Um, yeah, sooner is always better, but I think by 2035, I think we'll, we'll be substantially um, like m most of transport, most of new energy being produced will be sustainable. Um, broadband everywhere. Broadband everywhere. Yeah. I mean, at the very basic, when you think, like, how should people think about artificial intelligence? Like, if you're going to explain it to one of your younger uh, children, you would say artificial intelligence is what? Uh, it's just digital intelligence. And um, as the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. When you say that we'll exceed human intelligence, at some point soon, the machine's going to be smart, not just smarter, like exponentially smarter than any of us. Ensuring that the advent of AI is good, or at least we try to make it good, seems like a smart move. But we're way behind on that. Yes, we're not paying attention. We worry more about what, what name somebody called someone else than whether AI will destroy humanity. That's insane. What are the scenarios that scare you most? Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We've evolved to think about things that are very 
close to us, near to him, to, to be upset with other humans and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. Um, but then in recent decades, recent, just really in the last century, we had n nuclear bombs which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming which could destroy civilization or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. Um, Excuse me, how could AI destroy civilization? You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, I pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They're just in the way. Could an AI, even in this moment, just with the technology that we have before us, be used in some fairly destructive way? You could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technologies needed. Right now. That uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda. The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear. Right. And we are facing an exponential threat. And if you, uh, if you have a linear response to an exp exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. Most likely, yes. Essentially, how do we ensure that the future constitutes the, the sum of the will of humanity? Um, and so if we have billions of people with a high bandwidth link to the AI extension of themselves, it would actually make everyone hyper smart. We thought that what was happening in terms of their AI machinery was closer to human thought than had been seen before and quite worrying. It had a personality. Is that something that you think about at all and, or you worry about? Um, I think I think we should be concerned about uh, AI, and, and I said for a long time that I think there, should, there ought to be an, an AI regulatory agency that oversees um, artificial intelligence uh, for the public good. Um, and I think uh, just as there's anything that for anything that where there is a risk to the public, whether that's a the Food and Drug Administration or Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Communications Commission. Uh, where there is a public uh, risk or, or public good at stake, uh, there, 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 it's good to have sort of a, a government referee um, and a regulatory body. And I think we should have that for AI, and we don't currently. And um, that would be my, my recommendation.